Heidi from Snappy Tots. Thanks for joining me to crochet today. We are going to make these blocks. It's a 12 inch square. And what's cool about it is inside, there's actually a six inch square that was totally by accident. I just thought I really wanted to make this design. And then as I got the middle one done, I thought, hey, you know what? That's a cool little six inch square. It would be fun to use the six inch squares with the 12 inch ones, kind of like in between or like a four patch of the six inch, you know, to kind of make its own blanket if you wanted. This is part of the Moogly Afghan Cal for 2022. And I'm super excited to be able to be part of her blanket. And they do a different square by a, a different square by different designers. I had so much fun making it that I also made a pillow top out of it. Look how much bigger it is. And this is about a little more than half of one of the Karen Chunky Cakes. Isn't that fun? I just, I love it. And so I'm going to do a matching block that is a full spiral. So it's just this center spiral. I haven't added actually the extra ridge, but I'm going to do that for the full block. So like imagine this little square as a 12 inch block. And so you'll have a companion one if you want. And then I'd make kind of a fun pillow, or you could make a pillow to match your blanket if you're doing the Afghan, the year long Afghan with Moogly. So let's get started. I did mine in five colors, but I've seen some beautiful ones in just two colors, so just choose whatever you want. We're also going to be using a J-hook. You'll need some scissors, a yarn needle, and a measuring tape. The pattern for this project can be found on my blog, and I'll put a link to that in the description, as well as some links to some of the different techniques that I do. We're going to start with a J hook and the color we want for our center and we're going to do a magic circle of five single crochet stitches. You can start this any way you like to do a circle. This is how I do mine. I just really like doing a magic circle because you can pull that center completely closed and you don't have that center gap that sometimes can happen. I insert my hook under these two strands and then I grab the back yarn and I pull it up and I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to work five single crochet stitches in the circle around those two strands. Again, just use whatever technique makes you feel comfortable so that you end up with a circle of five single crochet stitches. After I have made sure that I have all five of the stitches, I'm going to slide it off my fingers and I'm going to grab the yarn tail. I'm going to watch these two strands until one of them starts to move. And whichever one moves, I'm going to grab onto that and I'm going to pull that to close my circle. Look how nice and tight that is. I really like how closed I can get that. Then I'm going to grab my yarn tail again and pull the circle closed. For the first part of this square, we are going to be working in continuous rounds, which means we're not going to be joining at the end of each round. So I am going to place a piece of yarn of a different color to mark the round, you can use the stitch marker, whatever you like. That just helps me keep track of it. And then I'm gonna work two single crochet in each stitch around. So in the first stitch, I'm gonna work one single crochet and then another single crochet in that same stitch. And I'm just gonna repeat that. So two single crochet in the next stitch. I'm just working my way around that circle until I have 10 single crochet stitches. If this is going at a slower pace than you would like, or if you just want to see different steps along the way, I will place time markers down in the description so that you can jump to those different places and work different steps. I'm trying to go at a slow enough pace that even beginners could kind of follow along. Um, you're always welcome to just fast forward if you'd like. So again, we're going to change colors. This time, I am going to finish 
this round with my new color. So I've started my single crochet and cut my yarn and I'm going to pick up the next color and I'm gonna finish this stitch with that new color. And this sets me up to start the next round with my next choice and that is blue. We are getting ready to start number three. And if you'll notice in the pattern, there's a note that starting on round number three, we are going to work in the back loops only. And we're going to do that until step number eight. And this is gonna help us create the spiral. So we're going to just work into the back loops. Now, what I have found is I like to actually work into that third loop that's back behind also. So I'm gonna insert my hook in the back loop and then into the loop back behind. And what this does is it helps prevent gaps. So my first I did a single crochet and then I'm gonna work a half double crochet in the same stitch. And then I'm gonna work two half double crochets in each stitch around. And this whole row, since we're working into single crochets, that third loop is a little bit tricky to find back there. Once we've worked the half double crochet round, then the rounds after that, it's much easier to find, in my opinion, that third loop. And if I've completely confused you with this, then just work into the back loops only. Hold on to the bottoms of your stitches so that they don't stretch and make lots of gaps. But if you'll just take a little bit of extra time to work into the back loop and then pivot your piece forward just a little bit so that you can see, look really close in the video, hopefully you can see it well enough and work into that. We're gonna work the same one, the next one. We're just working two half double crochets in each stitch around and that will give us 20 stitches when we're done. Step number four is basically the same, but we're gonna work a half double crochet in the back loop and the third loop of the next stitch. And then two half double crochet in the back loop and the third loop of the next stitch. And it should be much easier to find that third loop now back behind. We're just gonna work this all the way around and at the end of this step we should have 30 stitches and our piece should measure approximately three inches from side to side when this when this round is done.
from this point on, I'm only going to start each round with you, showing you how that step is going to be done and working a few of the stitches. And then if you're working right along with me, you can pause the video at that point and finish that round and then join back in with, as I start the next round. And like I said, there will be time markers in the description so you can skip ahead to whatever point you need to. We are ready to start step number five and we are going to change colors again. So we're going to finish off the previous round with a new color. And then this round we're still working in the back loops only plus the third loop and we're going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch and another half double crochet in the next stitch and then two half double crochets in the next stitch to get all my yarns where they need to be back there one and two and that's going to be my repeat for this round so half double crochet in each of the next two stitches and then two half double crochets in the next stitch. Now make sure as you're working these that you don't accidentally pick up a front loop because we want our spiral to stay nice and even as we go around because at the end we're going to be adding that round of slip stitches to the center to magnify our spiral and so we gotta make sure we have all of those stitches going around. At the end of round five we should have about 3.5 inches across or pretty close. All right on to step number six and it's basically the same thing. I'm continuing with the same color. I'm going to work a half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So in the back loops and we're picking up that third loop still. So one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna do two half double crochet in the next stitch. And that's our repeat for this round. If you want to measure at the end of each round, you can. At the end here, we should have 4.5 and a half inches across or pretty close. All right, we're getting ready for step number seven and we are going to change colors again. So I'm finishing off the previous round by starting the half double crochet with the current color and then changing to the new color that I'm all ready for step number seven. For this round we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. We're still working the back loop only plus that third loop that's back behind. So I'm working one and two three, four, and then I'm going to work two half double crochets in that next back loop only, and my third loop. I'm always gonna throw that in there for you. <laughs> I just really like how it keeps those stitches nice and close without having the gaps at the bottom. And just keep checking your spiral every once in a while to make sure that you haven't picked up a extra loop on the front and we'll just keep going.
Since this is the last round of our spiral section, we need to lower the height of our row. And so what we're going to do is we're going to end step number seven with a half double crochet and a single crochet in our last stitch instead of working two half double crochets. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And then that just kind of brings our spiral down and makes it a little more even so we're ready for our next step. At this point, if you want to measure, we should be at about five and a half inches across. Step number eight is going to change our circle into a square. I'm going to change colors. I'm switching to a lighter cream so that it helps my spiral stand out. And we're still going to work in back loops only and that third loop for this round. I'm going to chain two and in that same stitch I'm going to work a double crochet. Then I'm going to chain two and work two double crochets. And this creates the first corner of what's going to be our square. I'm going to pull my yarn tails, get it all nice and tight there. Snug, not tight. We're not going to pull the stitches. Be careful of that. So in the next stitch, I'm going to work one double crochet. Remember, each of these are in the back loops only, plus that third loop back behind. Then I'm going to work a half double crochet in the next stitch, a half double crochet in the next stitch, and then I'm going to work one single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then I'm back to half double crochet. It's already starting to flatten it out. It's so exciting. We're gonna work a half double crochet in the next stitch. Another half double crochet in the next stitch, a double crochet in the next stitch, and now it's time to start another corner. So in the next stitch we are going to work another combination. We're going to do two double crochets, and then we're going to chain two, and work two more double crochets in that same stitch. And then we're going to repeat this two more times. This is going to create our sides of our square. At the end of this round, we are going to finish by working a slip stitch into the top of the beginning chain two, and that's going to join this round. Now for step number nine, we are working in the stitches. We are not going to be working in back loops only anymore. We are going to slip stitch into the corner space right there, chain one, and then into the corner, we're going to work two single crochet, then we're going to chain two and work another two single crochet. And this is all in that chain two space. And this creates our corner. Then we're going to skip one stitch and this kind of gets hidden under all of those corner stitches so you might have to move those out of the way a little bit. Then work one single crochet in each of the next 17 stitches.
Okay, we're ready for another corner almost. We're going to work two single crochet, then chain two, and two single crochet again. And this is our repeat for this round. At the end of this round, we should have 72 stitches plus eight chains. That's two chains per corner. Now this is going to be pretty wonky shaped at this point, and it'll be fine. We are going to even that out as we go. We're going to end this step with a slip stitch in the first stitch to join. And then if you're doing a six inch block, you would just finish off here and be done. We're gonna get ready to start the first triangle. On step number 10, this starts the first triangle on one side of the square. And in my main sample, these are the lavender colors. This is gonna use 23 stitches on each side. So we're going to attach the new color in the first chain stitch at the right. We need to make sure we're going to work in back loops only. We're going to chain one, we're going to single crochet in that same stitch, and then single crochet in each of the next 22 stitches. So we'll have 23 stitches across this row. Make sure that you work each stitch into the back loop only. We don't want to start and end in the corner spaces because we're trying to make it look like this little six inch block is sitting on top of the bigger block. For steps 11 through 13, we are only going to be working in this one side of our square. So we're going to chain one, turn our piece over, and we're going to single crochet the first two stitches together. And then we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across until there's only two stitches left. And we're gonna single crochet those two stitches together. Okay, the next step is we're going to chain one and turn our piece over. And each of these next rows are going to be worked basically the same way. We're going to single crochet two together. Then we're gonna single crochet in each stitch across until there's only two stitches left. And then we're gonna single crochet those two stitches together. And we're gonna keep repeating that step until there are only three stitches remaining. At the end of this side, we are on step number 13 and we are going to chain one, turn our piece over, single crochet two together, and then chain two and slip stitch in that last stitch. And we can just finish off this yarn. Okay, next we're going to turn our piece over. We're gonna rotate the piece, and in the pattern I say clockwise, but I'm actually rotating it so that I can find the next stitch on the block, which is counterclockwise. And I'm gonna insert my hook into the back loop. I'm going to pull up my new yarn. I'm going to repeat the same process. In a chain one, I'm gonna single crochet in that same stitch and in the back loops only, single crochet in the next 22 stitches across. Now, as I work each of these sides, I need to make sure that I have 
23 stitches because if not, by the time I get to that last side, I'm not going to have enough stitches. At this point, our square should be about nine inches across from one side to the other, not diagonally. Chain one and make sure that you are working from the front of the block. We have slip stitched in the corner space and then chain one. And in that same corner space, we're gonna work a single crochet, chain two and another single crochet. Now we are going to work 13 single crochet stitches down this side until we get to the center and then we're going to single crochet two together across that gap. So just evenly space 13 stitches and as I've done this I did a pretty good job on the first side that I did and then I had a hard time making sure that I had the 13 stitches and so I just pulled those out and spaced them off again. I kind of make sure that I get at least to the halfway mark in this first triangle side and then I did pretty good. So just evenly space 13 stitches across make sure you're leaving yourself just a little bit of room at the end of this side of the triangle so that we can insert our hook and work the first half of that single crochet two together. Okay, so now that I'm at the gap, I'm going to double check my stitches, make sure I have 13, and then insert my hook in the very end of this side, pull up a loop, and in the beginning of the next triangle side, and then yarn over and single crochet those two together. Now I'm going to work 13 single crochet stitches across the side of the next triangle, not using the very end corner because we need to work a corner stitch in that. Okay, we are almost ready to do another corner. So I'm going to work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in that corner space again. And then I'm just going to repeat this around the outside of the whole square. At the end of step 16, we should have 116 stitches plus 8 chains from those 2 chains at each corner, and our square should be about 9.5 inches across. For step 17, our beginning chain is going to count as a stitch, so we're going to chain 2, and in that corner work one half double crochet, chain two, and work two half double crochet 
all in that same space to create our corner. And we're going to skip one. And again, it might be kind of hidden underneath these, this corner cluster, so just kind of move those out of the way. Work one half double crochet in each stitch for 27 stitches. After the 27 half double crochet, we're going to skip one. When we get to the corner, we're going to do another corner cluster. This time we're going to work two half double crochet, chain two, and two half double crochet in that chain space. And then we're going to skip one and work another half double crochet in the next 27 stitches. We're just going to keep repeating this around. At the end of step 17, we should have 124 stitches plus 8 chains, and our piece should measure approximately 10 and a quarter inches across. For step 18, I'm going to change colors, and the beginning chain is going to count as a stitch again. So with my new color, I'm going to chain two. I'm going to work in the corner space at one double crochet, then chain two and two double crochet. And this time we're going to be working post stitches. So I'm going to skip the first post and I'm going to work one back post double crochet around each post on this side until one post remains before the corner. I'm going to skip the last post and in the corner I'm going to work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet. And I'm just going to keep working that all the way around my piece. I'm going to end with a slip stitch in the first stitch to join. At the end of step 18, we should have 138 stitches plus 8 chains, and it should measure 10 and 3 quarters inches across. If yours is not meeting up with the measurements at this point, you can check my blog post for some suggestions on adjusting the size. For step number 19, we are changing colors again, and the beginning chain counts as a stitch. We're going to start with a chain two, work double crochet, a chain two, and two double crochet in the corner stitch. And then this is basically the same as our last round. We're going to skip a post, back post double crochet across until one post remains, which is 31 posts in between that we're going to be working.
just keep repeating this sequence around the outside of this block like we did our last round and we'll slip stitch to join in the end. At the end of this round we should have 140 stitches with 8 chains and it should measure approximately 11 and a quarter inches across and remember you're measuring from side to side not corner to corner. We have made it to our last round. I'm so proud of us for getting this far. So for step number 20, we are going to change yarn colors again. We're changing and doing a chain one, and we're going to work four single crochet in that corner space. And since I know you are probably tired of doing back post stitches, we're just going to work a round of single crochet. So we're going to skip our first stitch and you're probably going to have to push that cluster to the side a little bit to find the skipped stitch. And we're going to work one single crochet in the next 33 stitches across. And we'll skip the last stitch before we work our corner. When you get to the corner, you're going to work four single crochet in the corner space. Then you're just gonna keep repeating this around. Skip one stitch, work 33 single crochet across, skip a stitch, work a corner, and keep working that. And then slip stitch in your first stitch to join. At the end, our piece should have 148 stitches and it should measure pretty close to 12 inches across. It might need a little bit of blocking and instructions and tips for doing that are also in my blog post. If you are just a little short, you could add an extra round and that's also in the pattern. Now it's time to just weave in our ends and we are ready to work the spiral on the center. I'll have the spiral for my main sample. I started with Erin yarn that matched the outer edge of my spiral section. Then as my color spiraled, I changed my yarn color so that I was always one color behind what my stripes were. So like when I changed to lettuce, I changed my yarn color to ice blue and then so on and so forth. But you can do all one color. You could do a variegated yarn. This is your piece do it as you'd like. You do you however it makes you happy with your piece. So with the outer edge of the block towards you, you're going to find that last front loop of the center section and we are going to work in those remaining loops, spiraling around, doing a slip stitch in each stitch until we get to the center. Now make sure that if you usually work slip stitches a little bit snugger than your other stitches. You might even want to go up one size hook here. Just be cautious so that you don't gather in these stitches and make your block pucker. I work over my yarn tail just for the first couple of stitches and I don't know if you've noticed throughout the video but I usually tend to do that just to hold my yarns in place so they don't slip apart. I only do that for a couple of stitches and then I'll go in from the back and I'll weave those in really well but you can play with the different colors and I hope that you will share pictures of your creations because I would love to see all your different color combinations and everything. Thank you so much for making this with me. I hope you've enjoyed this piece and you'll crochet with me again.